This is Josh Petersdorf. You know me as Roadhog, a.k.a. Optimus Slimed, and you're watching Brotastic Nerddom. Remember, if you want to get the nerddom and you want to get Brotastic, get with these guys or get the f*** out. <laughs> it's so good! Oh, man. What about Scroll Out? Perfect. You should do voices for a living, man. That's a <laughs> you really should. It's so good. Here with Rusty as Mark Allen from Video Game Heaven. They all ain't ready for this. I don't even know if I'm ready for this. Oh my god, what happened to your head, dude? Just wanted to give a shout out to everybody at Brotastic Nerdum. The Brotastics, you guys should be doing restaurant reviews. <laughs> so guys, it's Zach with Brotastic Nerdum, and we're here with Josh Petersdorf. Yeah, but you might know me as Roadhog. So, as, as you just said, you are the voice of Roadhog in what is arguably one of the most popular games of the last couple of years. Right. Um, it's, I mean, skyrocketed. Obviously, it's probably done very well for you and your personal life. And, uh, it's amazing. So, what's that been like to go from... In, Relative obscurity. Yeah, to, I mean, just, absolutely. you know, you're a voice actor in, in some, some Blizzard games, and then, boom, one of the most popular games, uh, and then people are down there dressed as you. So, what's, been, what's that been like for it's you? It's been amazing. It's been extremely flattering. We're all so thankful to this wonderful community. And to be a part of this, to me, is the best thing. You know, I grew up doing theater, grew up doing speech contests, spelling bees. I was always a kid in the public eye. I made music for several years. And one thing I learned was, I love this stuff. So, when I got an opportunity to move to Los Angeles X amount of years ago and start training to become a voice actor, it was only a matter of time before I wound up in my agent's office and that one fateful day that Blizzard audition came through and on. Here's a true story, folks. I tried my butt off on that one because I knew it had a code name for the game, but it did say the company. It was like Blizzard presents a uh, code name for the game or whatever. And, and then the character was a, ironically a picture of the butcher, which it all comes full circle now because now Roadhog has the butcher skin and they're mm. like, we, he's very pig-like, but he doesn't make pig sounds. Go. <laughs> but it's been a blessing. It's been amazing. It's been out of this world. And you don't think that you're in something that's so cool until you go see Star Wars and they're playing a trailer for Overwatch before Star Wars The Force Awakens. And that was when I was like, oh, hairs in the back of my neck kind of stood up. I was like, this is for real. So Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, are there any, are you following the, the, the league at all? Is there anybody Absolutely. you're rooting for? Oh. <laughs> is that a San Francisco shock? Neck, list slash lanyard? Yes, it is. I root for all the teams equally in the end because I really think it's fun and I want everyone to have fun and play well. But uh, home base, the shock did approach me and oh. reached out and we're like, hey. And so, yeah, I'm definitely going to root for them and probably the home Los Angeles teams because uh, that's mostly where we are. That's awesome, man. Um, and the arena is amazing. If you have a chance to check out the Overwatch League Arena, and you're ever in Los Angeles, I know this sounds crazy to all our East Coast friends, but if you're ever on the West Coast, please do. It is state-of-the-art facility, packed full of Blizzard, nostalgia, Overwatch goodies, and it's the atmosphere in there is real. It's where Jay Leno and Bob Hope and Johnny Carson used to record. So you're in the presence of, like, greatness already when you walk in there. It's fabulous. Yeah, I imagine there's some really cool buildings uh, in L.A. that you just sort of like, oh, I'm standing where... History mm -hmm. happened. History, history that's relevant to me happened. I think that's that's probably really, really cool. I mean, more than just like the Walk of Fame, but just sort of being around. That right, kind of stuff. and I mean, we got to meet a bunch of the people, the commissioner of the league, um, and a bunch of other amazing behind the scenes people who help run the Overwatch League, and they're doing a fantastic job. And uh, a lot of the, we met a couple of the team owners too. And they were shaking our hands like, oh, thank you guys for coming out here. And it was amazing. Like, these guys are big players. Some of them own, like, baseball teams. You know, like, like one of them owns, I think one of them owns, like, the Mets. And another possible owner of an Overwatch team owns, like, the Patriots. So it was, oh. like, huge to be in the room with these guys and have them shake our hands like, you guys are doing a great job. So, huh, huh. <laughs> Do you think Blizzard knew that this game was going to get as... As big as it got. I mean, if you're talking about Robert Kraft possibly owning a team of, you know, guys playing Overwatch, I mean, that's... Do you think that they anticipated that level of reception for this? I don't or? think you could have anticipated it. I think they knew the game would be successful. And I think they knew that the game was going to be great. Because I think Blizzard's middle name has always been Polish. Yeah, they've never put out anything that... You know, nobody. And they take their time so that sometimes you have to wait a little longer to get it. But when you do, it was like, oh, this is why it was worth it. And I remember the first time I saw the previews for Overwatch, 
I, I was confused because it was a year when I was like, where's the new Warcraft expansion? And they just dropped that. And everyone was like, huh? You know? <laughs> what is this? It was a break. It was a place in a new direction. The only game that was really kind of doing that was like Team Fortress 2. Mm-hmm. And it immediately kind of drew comparisons to that. But then they were, they created their own universe that really, it's such a big sandbox. I think the most successful thing about Overwatch is that it allows so many open avenues for the fans to create and for the, the developers to create and for Michael Chu and the writing team to create and it, it gave when we just breathed life to these characters I felt like we were just following you know the words of the script which is a testament to how amazing Michael Chu and his team was but they say sometimes you don't pick the role the role picks you mm-hmm. I think that's really kind of what happened here it was just like a the fates aligned and the car just got yeah. and it just worked how much characterization did you get to like your own input wise quite a bit um, in terms of how he's breathing and hacking and his cough, that was all. They're like, "All right, give us what you got. You know, let's see, let's try some stuff." And I did the, and they're like, "Yes, can you do that ten more times without vomiting?" <laughs> and I was like, oh, "Hold on." So, a lot of the cool. They did a great video at BlizzCon ten two years ago about the sound design of Roadhog in particular and all the clicks and kind of gas sounds that go with him and taking hits of the laughing healing guys or whatever and the, the whole sound design team over there is phenomenal and they do I think the sounds of Overwatch is another reason why it's so popular because it sounds different you don't hear recycled sounds in that game it's all mm-hmm. brand new sounds that fit that sound awesome so the sound design I think was another huge selling point of why Overwatch is successful that's awesome um, well, uh Breaking away a bit from Overwatch, um, which I, I'm sure Talking about the green, man. all of the, <laughs> yes. So I'm sure everybody, most everybody here, is probably excited to see you uh, for for your roles in the, in the games. But I'm a I'm a former actor myself, um, and I have a lot of friends that still do theme park acting, and I know how coveted the role of Grinch at Grinchmas is for them. Yes. So seeing that you get it. Consistently, I was like, "This guy knows something," and he. I wanted to ask you about that. Like, you obviously know how how important that role is yeah. for those guys. Um, what's it like to be him? Oh man, I play. I have had the blessing to play several characters at theme parks. Uh, currently, I'm doing Optimus Prime and Megatron at Universal Studios Hollywood. Also, so if you'd like to come see the Autobots kick some butt and take some names, you come see me. Hashtag roll out. And so <laughs> that was amazing. Right. <laughs> that was really good. Um, so I've been doing that for four years, and that introduced me over to Universal Studios Hollywood, which allowed me to get introduced to the Grinch. And it's a two-hour prosthetic job. You cannot have any facial hair when it goes on. So for four years, I would shave my beard around every December for two months mm-hmm. and do this. It's amazing. Hot, terribly uncomfortable, yep. but amazing. Um, being the Grinch, I'd always say, you know, I'll never be Jim Carrey because Jim's amazing. We can never be Jim. Same way Jim could never be Andy Kaufman, right? But I can play the Grinch. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. I can still be the Grinch without being Jim Carrey, and I can put my homage to Jim in there. But one of the things I always did when I was Grinch is I, I did the character the way Jim played it, but he was, it was always after he was happy. So, like, his heart went warmed up. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of kids are scared to death of the green. <laughs> it's scared. Yeah, it'd be, uh, the giant uh, green furry man. Uh, With uh, yellow yeah. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and child. <laughs> Can't imagine why they'd be fearful of that. French, Mike. A lot of side mouth talking. Right. You know? And uh, the prosthetics was the biggest deal. I'd say the guys who do it on my side, Hollywood, it's a little different than it is in Orlando on that side. In Orlando, they do a great stage show and, uh, and, and they do the whole kind of run through. In Hollywood, it's a lot more atmosphere meet and greet based. So we're in a center plaza live for 30 minutes, just live with a big line and kids coming up and we get to play. It's really been rewarding. There's a special individual. There's couple uh, who have come multiple years in a row, one gentleman in particular named Noah, who has cerebral palsy and other things, and his family brought him there for four years, and they would wait every year for me, because they knew that I was their Grinch, and so the dad would kind of lean over and be like, hey, is, uh, 
is the Grinch with the bombastic voice? Is he here? <laughs> is he here yet? And they'd be like, and then my friend who was the mayor would kind of be like, oh, oh that stinky guy. He's here in 30 minutes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it you know. gives, those roles are so fun because you just get to be the character with no, uh, like, there's no real script that you have no. to stick to at that point. You're just kind of like, you're out and you're meeting those people. So I, I know firsthand how fun that can be. So much fun. So I, I know I, I needed to talk to you about it. Absolutely. Like, That's, I'm not going to get a chance to talk to a Grinchmas again. You know, a Grinch, a Grinch was great. A Grinch was great before. Yeah. It's, uh, so that's really cool. I, I think I'm probably the only person here that was excited about no, that. No, no, totally. I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that, that you asked about yeah, that. Yeah. Good homework right there. Oh, absolutely. Here's a cool story, too. Uh, if you are in the greater California, Los Angeles area during the holiday, the billboard picture of the Grinch for the past two years has been made. So, and they like Photoshop my teeth. Like, it was so weird. Like, it's this picture of me like, Right? And then they like, you see like my little gap tooth kind of like, and they were like, whoop, they photoshopped it. They, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and how, like, they how, made my tongue a little bit more red. It's very strange. How like, many times did you look at that billboard before you noticed that they edited parts of your, of your actual face? Immediately. Really? Immediately. I looked up, I was like, where are my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was one of those moments when, when I got to send a picture to my mom, like, mom, look, I'm on a billboard, you know, it was about like, it was above some random, like, weed dispensary in, in North Hollywood. <laughs> it's like, here it is! Like, you're the Grinch! Like, you made it! You made it! So, it was, it was so rewarding, and meeting a lot of the kids and getting to hold their hand and say, keep at it, kid, was, was worth it all the way. So, I had some really great memories doing that. Of course. I, I, I can only imagine. Um, well, uh, I don't have much uh, else in the way of, like, I want to thank you. I'll take this opportunity to thank the Overwatch community. Thank you guys for being so awesome. Me and Gaku Space back in December, the voice actor of Genji ran a charity toy drive on my stream, twitch.tv slash optimus underscore slimed. Put that right here. And so <laughs> you have to edit that in. That's it. Right now. More work. Sorry. Um, and we raised $4,000 for a toy drive charity this year in a matter of like three weeks. And I went and bought... 12 cartloads of toys and Toys R Us who dropped them off all over low-income neighborhoods in Los Angeles. And it was so rewarding and it was just a testament to how strong this community is and how proud I am of everyone who's involved and everyone who comes to see us and everyone who says they enjoy the game. So, thank you. That's great. Uh, do you have anything, anything upcoming that you want to talk about? I have a bunch about? of uh, exciting stuff upcoming. Stay tuned for Netflix. I do have some exciting news in the future and I also have some exciting news uh, in terms of Geek and Sundry. I've been featured on their stuff, doing Lore Masters. I did Game Engine with Erica Ishii recently. I did the uh, Amy and Darren Morning Show on Alpha. And there's some more exciting things that have already been done that I cannot talk about, but they're yeah. on the way. So yeah, stay tuned. There's definitely some good stuff uh, coming out. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our social media pages. Now, what's the scouter say? It's under 9,000. Oh!